Let's hear about a little known weapon of war, the wooden cannon. Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria, and today we're looking at wooden cannons, part of the Obscure Weapons playlist. Check out my playlist uh, here if you're interested in other weapons uh, that are less well known from history. And indeed, if you haven't subscribed, please remember to click that subscribe button. So, what on earth are wooden cannons, indeed wooden guns, we could say even in some cases mortars as well. And in fact we're going to fleetingly look not just at wooden ones, but ones made of other unexpected materials as well. Now the first thing we absolutely have to admit is that wood is not exactly a perfect material to make a gun barrel out of. Um, indeed the naming of barrels of guns comes partly from the uh, construction method which was originally made like barrels but usually out of iron okay so if we're looking at medieval guns which first appear pretty much in Europe in the 14th century uh, made of staves and hoops much like a barrel and these are usually made of iron and indeed you can cast uh, cannon barrels or gun barrels out of iron or indeed bronze or other types of um, metal in some cases but what we're looking at here specifically are wooden cannons so why on earth would anyone make a cannon or anything similar to it out of wood well quite simply because they haven't got access to enough metal. So if you're facing opposing forces who have artillery, who have cannons, and you don't have enough cannons, then one possible contingency, one sort of emergency measure you can go to is making guns out of wood. And believe it or not, it does work. Not fantastically, but it does work. So one example comes from India, and that's right, his name was Alamgir, who was the sixth Mughal emperor, actually made use of wooden cannons in defensive um, sort of operations. Now, uh, at the time, the Mughals were very, very powerful, but they had a shortage of artillery. And quite simply, uh, with all of the external threats that they were facing, sometimes there were fortified positions, uh, castles essentially, that needed to have a certain number of guns. And so Alamgir, made use of wooden cannons to defend some of his fortifications. Now before going on to other examples I'll just briefly mention as well that these wooden cannons can be built in a number of different ways. Usually they have a sort of uh, uh, kind of barrel like construction but very often they will have a, um, a small metal tube or a metal bore essentially put inside the wood. So, uh, but not always. Uh, so sometimes literally the bore would be drilled out of the center of the wood, in which case a large log uh, could be used. Um, and as we'll see, there are different examples from different places and different construction methods. So they weren't all made the same and they're all made across a wide uh, variety of places with different types of wood and sometimes with metal elements being used in their construction. Now the next example is from the Jesuits in uh, Paraguay and that's in the 17th and 18th centuries and these actually record the indigenous people, the Native Americans there, making cannons or forms of artillery gun out of wood uh, to fight against the uh, Spanish and Portuguese um, colonists. So again another example of they just didn't have access to barrels but they did could trade for gunpowder. So if you can get access to gunpowder and remember the projectiles for these can be basically anything. Okay so these types of wooden cannons they could be used with um, forms of crude canister or shot essentially turning it into a giant shotgun. Very effective against a large body of enemy infantry or indeed ship clearance. Um, so you don't need to have specially made projectiles you can use even stuff like gravel and stuff like this small pebbles. Uh, but obviously if you have access to maybe lead or that kind of stuff. If you want to make actual cannonballs which are good for breaching fortifications, or putting holes in ships or things like this, uh, then indeed you can use stones, you don't need to use a cannonball. So if you have access to gunpowder, then basically if you have access to gunpowder you can make a cannon because you've got access to wood, you can enhance that with metal if possible, metal tube ideally for the bore and then support that relatively thin um, metal tube with wooden cladding around it. And then you can basically put the gunpowder, some wadding, and then anything down the barrel to shoot at the enemy. Now indeed in North America, particularly the Eastern tribes, we do see occasional uh, construction of cannons uh, used um, for the most part, well, against wars against the, between the French and the British, but additionally, presumably, against American colonists as well. Now, this is a rare occurrence. I don't think this was common, but there are references to them constructing forms of large gun cannon, essentially, out, artillery piece, out of wood and reinforcing it 
with hide. We'll come back to hide and leather in a little bit. Now if we fast forward to the 19th century we actually have quite a surprisingly large number of examples of wooden cannons for the most part being used by people who are being subjugated or ruled over by another group who have control over the metal or the guns so they're forced to make do with what they've got available. One of those famous examples is in Bulgaria in 1876 um, and thanks to Stefan for this you know who you are uh, and this was in the April uprising against the Ottoman Empire and they used these wooden uh, cannons. They weren't hugely successful but they used them anyway. Equally in the Philippines the Filipino people used wooden guns against the uh, Spanish uh, colonialists in their wars there as well. Additionally the Romanians specifically in the Apusini mountains, sorry for my pronunciation there, uh, in Transylvania manufactured um, wooden cannons as well in their use against the Austro-Hungarian army in the 1840s. Very similarly the Vietnamese used wooden cannons against the French colonialist imperial powers in the uh, Cochin China uh, campaign, again sorry for my pronunciation there, in 1862. So another example again of people making do with what they've got available when they've got gunpowder but not an awful lot else. And there are also references to the Japanese using wooden cannons in 1868 in the Boshin War. Now related to these wooden cannons are leather cannons and you might be thinking what the hell? How do you make a how do you make a cannon out of leather? Well, quite simply, it was actually a composite. Um, you essentially had a metallic tube, usually copper copper alloy tube, relatively thin, but then that would be wrapped with cord, and then there'd be leather over that in layers, uh, and perhaps bands around the outside of that to hold it all together. So essentially, it's many layers of stuff around a metallic tube, and this indeed is not going to be the longest lasting gun but you'll get some shots out of it. It's going to be lighter than a metal gun and a lot lot cheaper to make. This was something that seems to have been first thought of uh, by the Swiss and Austrians and we have to say certainly in uh, medieval Europe uh, a lot of gunnery and gun technology seems to have had its roots particularly in Switzerland, Austria, southern Germany. Um, so not that surprising in that sense but this was something really in the Renaissance that came about as an alternative, a way of essentially producing more guns for less money and perhaps making ones which were more easy to transport. And Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden really grabbed this idea uh, by the collar um, and tried to make it his own and in the 1620s um, in Sweden's war with Poland uh, this was they kind of delved into the manufacture of leather, leather, leather guns uh, and tried to leather cannons and tried to make this more of a mainstream thing. In fact the technology was tweaked and uh, tried to be improved and these were guns ultimately that were used, uh, very very similar ones, used in the English Civil War of the 1640s and 1650s. So indeed they were used in absolutely major mainstream wars as were the wooden cannons also. We should also make a passing mention as well of bamboo are used in guns. Technically bamboo is not a wood uh, but that bamboo was certainly used in the uh, construction of cannons um, and indeed if we go back to uh, China and Japan we find references even if we go all the way back to the Ming Dynasty there are references to wooden or wood and bamboo. I'm not completely clear on that. Um, guns, cannons and this again is a contingency, it's when there's not enough metal or time, remember that it takes time and, and resources, money to produce metal cannons. If you've got to throw together some cannons for the defence of a fort quickly, even if you only get one shot out of them and I think a lot of people watching this, uh, like I mean I shoot so a lot of you out there will, will also be shooters and you'll be familiar with the safety concerns about something like a shotgun that where the bore's been worn a bit thin and you consign it to the to the rust heap and you don't use it anymore out of concern. So we're raised to be very cautious with firearms but remember that we expect firearms to shoot many thousands of rounds whereas back in the day a cannon on a fort it might only need to fire once. Think about it more like a, a bomb or a landmine. So if you can make a wooden cannon that you load with a load of shot and it covers the um, you know the ramp up to some gates for example as a last ditch light the fuse and hide behind a wall well then if it blows up it blows up but if it fills that uh, kind of uh, void in front of it with um, shrapnel and with a shot then that's a good thing because it's going to be wounding enemies. 
So these guns actually, I think, were quite important in history. You'll see that they were repeatedly used. They were used in India, they were used all over Southeast Asia, they were used in China and Japan, they were used in Europe very extensively, even in the 19th century when, you know, revolvers and, and breech-loading um, artillery had already been invented for a long time. They were still using wooden guns in Europe, primarily by people who didn't have access to something better. So, when needs must, you use what's available. The most important element here, of course, is the gunpowder. If you've got the gunpowder, then you can make a cannon, essentially, out of anything, as we've seen. So, um, I hope this has been somewhat illuminating and interesting. I'm sure many of you watching my channel will know about these wooden guns. Maybe you didn't know about how uh, widespread they were, and over what a long period of time, and in how many different countries they've been used. Uh, but some of you may not have ever heard of these before. So I hope you've enjoyed watching um, and learning a little bit more about this topic. It's only been a quick skim over, of course. Check out uh, all of the links below. Check out the playlist for Obscure Weapons if you liked this video. And please remember to subscribe if you haven't done already. Cheers for watching, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.